Well, hi, everybody. Guess what? It's day two of Chris's adventures in switching to Arch. And uh, this will probably be a little shorter update because the momentum has slowed a little bit now that I've gotten the system installed. I want to start with kind of the coolest thing is I'm using this uh, screencaster called Simple Recorder, Simple Screen Recorder, which I found in the uh, Arch repo. And as you can tell by my poppy mic here, it lets me record from my USB microphone and my whole 1920 by 1080 screen um, right to uh, an AUG Vorbis or... H.264 file, so that's really cool. So I'm going to try this for my screen caps, because I'm just getting ready for uh, this week's episode of Plan B, but I wanted to give you guys a couple of updates. I had um, a ton of feedback, including uh, on the YouTube video page and on the Linux Action Show subreddit. Uh, got 65 comments on um, on the thread over there, and a lot of good a lot of good suggestions in both places, and on Twitter and Google+. Um, one that I wanted to respond to was, uh, Rickson here, because uh, I don't know if you guys saw my last video, but I was trying to get Lightworks to work on Arch, and I was running into some problems. Well, he says, he, he drilled in here, he says, hey, Chris, I got Light, Lightworks running on Arch, it's kind of tricky, but here's how you do it. The first problem is, is it uses, and he goes on to say, essentially, it uses packages that assume they've been built and patched for Ubuntu by Ubuntu. Like, uh, it uses, uh, it has some trouble with H.264 files because it's assuming you're using Ubuntu's FFmpeg implementation. Um, it, you know, with the libtiff file, it was having issues with uh, a lot of work there, but it sounds like it's doable. He even had to end up making kind of a workaround script that he was nice enough to uh, to post for me. It, I guess this might be a demonstration of where sometimes I worry that vendors are going to lock people into Ubuntu by creating their software for it. And it's almost because of all the different moving pieces of a distribution you can see here where their encoding library requires the Ubuntu version. But I'm not, I'm not writing it off yet. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that I'm finished. Here's something I did last night that I thought was really cool and a good example of something that would break just about any other distro except for maybe Gen 2 or, or Linux from scratch. Uh, you know, everything in Arch is customizable. In fact, I was I was surprised that I, I don't know what I missed when I was setting up GNOME, but I didn't actually install an image viewer by default. So I, I couldn't, it was trying to, <laughs> it's funny because somehow Internet Explorer for Wine got registered as my default image viewer. So every image I would open on my system would, would end up trying to open up an IE. But thankfully now uh, it, I, I got I have GNOME installed and that's been taken care of. But it was a funny example of how just it's so customizable where some of these things that might be quote-unquote dependencies on other distributions can just be completely ripped out and replaced in Arch, and the system just keeps on moving. The font rendering system, while it sounds funny, uh, is a great example. And last week on my last video, I got a ton of feedback, oh, Chris, your fonts look awful. Well, yeah, there's a couple of reasons, one of which is because of interlacing in the video capture, which is one of the reasons I'm doing the software capture today. Um, and I decided to replace the default uh, font with the Ubuntu fonts because I like the way those look, especially like in the terminal. I, I think I think that looks particularly good. Um, just you know, mm. but I've actually I, and, and I've been told that uh, this these Infinity and in Final Day fonts, whatever. I'm sorry, I'm so I'm so horrible with the, the language that I speak. <clears throat> I've been told these are even better, so I might try those later because you can just swap it in, swap it out. It's pretty cool. I thought maybe I would try a crash and burn scenario. So let's say I'm over here on OMG Ubuntu reading about Mark Shuttleworth and Spotify. And I see these Ubuntu guys, they're getting Spotify, and I'm like, man, I'd sure love to have Spotify on my Archbox. Well, let's go take a look at the Arch user repo, because this is the area I had the biggest misunderstanding about, so it's still the area I'm wrapping my brain around. So I've searched over here in uh, aur.arch.org, I've searched for Spotify, and I got a bunch of results. And at first you're like, oh, this is too much crap. I don't, you know, I don't know what I should be selecting if you don't recognize the names. But one of the nice things about the system is you can sort by votes. So that's not too bad. And I can see, oh, look, the package name Spotify has 554 votes. So, okay, that's that's pretty easy. So uh, one of the th tools that was recommended to me by, by a few of you out there was PAC-R. <clears throat> Sorry about the popping. I'm using a USB mic. And PAC-R, this is where it is so cool. Because, like, imagine if PPAs were centralized, maintained by the community, and integrated into apt-get. PAC-AUR sits on top of the Pac-Man system and will go out and fetch it from either a local, you know, official Arch, not local, but official Arch repo, or it'll go get it from the AUR. So if I do Pac-Man-S and I give it Spotify, I hit enter here, goes out and says, okay, Spotify not found in the repositories, trying AUR. Automatically. I don't know to do that. And then it says, would you like to proceed with the installation? Yes. No, I don't need to view the package build script or the dot install. Give it my super awesome 500 character password. 
and then it just goes out. <clears throat> it'll download Spotify, and if it needs to build it, it'll build it. If it needs to pull uh, dependencies, it'll pull them. If those dependencies are available in, in the standard repos, it'll give them from there. If it has to go get them from the AUR, uh, it will. That's always where I've run into my troubles, is where if there's a bunch of dependencies that also has to go pick from the Arch user repository, which then have their own dependencies, sometimes it's an issue. It actually, for for anything that seems to be common and popular, it's no big deal. Like, uh, I downloaded the uh, Midori browser from the Arch user repo. Uh, this is such a sweet browser, if you guys haven't checked out Midori. And it was just a super quick uh, pack AUR-S Midori and Bob's your uncle, it's set up and installed. I had a, a problem that I tweeted about uh, and, and put on G Plus last night where when I was installing and building software, my uh, my Windows would be very, very laggy. And like the activity screen and the application screen would, would almost be unusable. Like it would it would it would paint onto the screen. <clears throat> it was awful. And uh, I, I couldn't figure out what it was and I I realized about an hour into having the problem, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm building wine, and so it's like my whole system was just totally unusable. I realized that I think I turned on laptop mode tools, and even though I said when it's plugged into AC, you know, turn off, even though I had that configured, it seemed to still be on. I went and uh, disabled uh, laptop mode tools, rebooted my machine, and all of the lag I was experiencing cleared up. It was, it was awesome. Oh, well, I wonder if, uh, did you guys see that crash? That happens sometimes. That happens sometimes. I don't know if that I don't know if that will come through and uh, what you see or not. But anyways, let's go into activities and see if I got Spotify. Looking for Spotify. I see Midori. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, Spotify. There it is. Boom. So now we have Spotify, and it's that simple. I didn't have to go add a PPA or anything like that. I just needed to know its name in the Arch user repo and then use uh, Pack AUR to go get it. So I think this is probably where I'll end it right here. Uh, so my takeaways, I guess, so far today are uh, performance is crazy good still. Things like Pac-Man and Yort, even though Yort seems to have a bad rep, are awesome tools that really bring package management to a whole new level for me. Like it just really made it click. And uh, go check out a screen recorder, simple screen recorder if you want something like this.